welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters. The old heads talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain. We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please, sir, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple lessons. Fill the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts. And allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the Nerdiverse. Welcome to the Masters of the Nerdiverse podcast, where we always have such sites to show you. This antique messenger bag of a podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and of course Spotify. I'm of course your host, Mike G, and with me as always is the also host, the collector to my grandmaster, Ozzy Austin, question mark? I guess we're here today, and uh, I gotta tell you, boys and girls, I daddy needs some big black, black fucking coffee injected straight into my heart because life is too miserable to go on right now without coffee. Dude, I saw the beginnings of the ant takeover this weekend, dude. Of oh, the ant overlords. That's July. July is the ant overlord takeover, dude. With the giant ants that burrow from 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 the subterrains. And, and that, who do you that, want to do? that shoot coronavirus from their guns, you know? What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about, like, how every month there's a new horror that's introduced in 2020. Yeah? The the, the horror for July is the ant takeover. What the hell? What the, what's the, this ant takeover in business? The, the ant takeover, dude. I've seen, like, you know how there's sinkholes all over the world and they're unexplained? Yeah. That's part, that's plan A of the ants, Doug. And they're going to become our new overlords, as prophesied through the Simpsons. A swarm of flying ants for four miles stretched over the UK and looked like rain on the weather radar. That's the ant takeover, my man. What the hell is happening right now? It's the beginnings. No. And they sh- and they and their little mandibles are dipped in coronavirus. So if you get no bit by ants one... are ants are terrifying little beak creatures because they have a hive mind and they can work together better than anyone else's business. Why are they flying over and have like a mile wide rate? What the hell is going on? Don't interrupt my hive mind. I'm no, shut you. up for shut up. No, I, no, this reality is boring. This reality is bad now. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, get hype. No, I'm not hype. I'm Get sad. Hype, I'm, I'm terrified now. Here they come. Oh, Lord, they coming. Oh, God, they are coming. Yeah, man. And then we won't have the sun anymore because we'll just be enveloped in a in an infinite bed of ants. What in God's green earth is happening today? Yeah, man. We don't need nuclear winter. <laughs> winter. Uh, we will have <laughs> an enveloped blanket of ants that covers the earth, Doug. This is wild. And our plants will die, and our, 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 you know, our soda will be warm. You know, it's not going to be this hot. Is, this is so wild. And I then, don't know what's happening right now. And then all of Earth will have to toil in the sugar mines to feed the infinite queen that lives on the moon. Safe from... All right, everybody. Safe from reprisals, Doug. I think this is where we stop and get off the crazy train, because I'm a little too much beyond this right now. All right, I'm this gonna is... bring it. I'm gonna bring it back to some sort of normal reality. I'm having such an anxiety attack right now about flying ants eating my house. They're coming. This is too much. <laughs> it's, it's on its way. Oh Christ! Speaking of things on their way, how how in what way did your week go, Austin? Uh, my week went interesting. Um, how do I start this? Um, I don't know. My wife and I finished off Last of Us too. Nice. Lots of feelings, lots of thoughts about that game. All the feels. I started playing Ghost of Tsushima. Lots Tsushima. of lots of talks, lots of feelings about that game as well. Yep. If you want to get into it anytime soon. Yeah, we can and get into it. I know the whole thing. Baller. And I ha- here's the funny thing. I had to create a podcast episode for my master's program. Nice. Just give them, just sip them one of these Wu Tang double sided CDs, Doug. <laughs> you know, right? A plus plus, Doug. <laughs> so I these, like, Doug. I went through and I just like recorded an episode for a podcast, like five minutes long, talking about 
part of my, I guess, program? Yep. It's really, really weird. It's wild, and I love it. But, man, this is like the... Did not expect this to be an assignment kind of thing to happen to me. We are part of the zeitgeist, my man. This this whole pot... I'm, I'm kind of happy I started this thing so far back now. People at the house, all they do is listen to podcasts. We're already in there, dude. Oh, God, yeah. You're already in there, man. Oh, God, yeah. (laughs) In there like swimwear, baby. MOTN, a thousand years. Good stuff, man. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, but uh, I guess I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Business and pleasure start to mix in odd ways, Doug. You know? uh, I mean, it's it's hilarious, honestly. I kind of love it, but man, this is going to be just such a wild ride for me to go through. Anywho, um, let me know when you want to talk about Last of Us and freaking Ghost of Tsushima, because I can go on for a good little rant. About let's, talk about, uh, cause let's, let's talk about... Uh, Your week Last of Us now. Let's talk about Last of Us now, and then I'll talk about my week, and we'll close it on Ghost of Tsushima. How about that? Uh, Spoiler-free. Hey, I'm not going to play it. Go nuts. I just want to know about the audience, though, to be fair. Uh, you know, how, how long about has this? the game been out? How long has the game been out? game's uh, been out for about a month. How about this? Make, like, a like a note in the podcast description or, like, some kind of warning. Um, I'll make a note of it. Uh, okay, so, so starting... I'm going to go mm-hmm. in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so Joel deserved to die. Like, that's, like, no doubt in my mind. (laughs) Joel deserved to die because he was an awful human being. He made enemies. He deserved his death. (laughs) However, uh, the storyline and everything else like this about other characters dying, about characters uh, basically living just for shock value, completely boring as well. You get random characters you don't build any relationship with and they just die in a cutscene. Great. I don't care. That character was dumb. I have no investment in them. Why should I care about that character? Jesse? Boring. Yeah. It's Ellie's girlfriend's baby daddy you were best friends with and he dies cool he had no he had no flavor he had no character flavor all of abby's friends whenever you play her yeah you know who they are and you kill them as ellie but guess what you kill them as ellie first through most of ellie's story and then you go through abby's story and you know these people are going to die it's like well shit if i know they're going to die i don't care that's boring that's mm-hmm. bad writing mm-hmm. oh my god get over yourself naughty dog this is not the schindler's list of video games but they they said it was, so it is. No, it's not. Schindler's <laughs> List was something very dramatic and very, very just, oh, my God. It meant so much to the world. This game means nothing to the grand scheme of things. Here's the thing. To our culture, to our society, this game means nothing. Here's the thing, man. <laughs> Can you imagine you, you spent 20 years making the Sistine Chapel, and you think it's literally from your head has been blessed with the power of god right you made the most perfect thing you've ever created and then people start pointing out flaws hey you know that 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 shoulder is not really symmetric with the other shoulder you know that that red is running a little bit you're like you're like shut up it's my masterpiece though it's my it's my magnum opus it's like no you just think it is man it's a video game at the end of the day (laughs) Okay, so I'll it's say meant, this. It's meant for enjoyment in, 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 in <laughs> subversion and immersion. It's a video game. This isn't... Yeah. All entertainment is entertainment for a reason. It's not... It, it can have messages. It can have meaning. But to then start to, to put it on such a pedestal to make it feel, you know... That it adjusts the you know the way we think going forward is a little narcissistic. <laughs> oh, entirely so, and just a little. Geez, the, the the storytelling was so bad because of two things. One, how they made the original pacing was you play as both characters at the very beginning until Joel gets killed. You play as Ellie for about forty eight percent of the game afterwards, and Ellie goes through so much of Abby's personal history. That whenever Abby's personal history is revealed during her playthrough, it means nothing because, you know, everybody that she loves dies. There's no dramatic tension to it all. Yeah. So why should I build a relationship with this character in Abby's storyline if I know they're just going to fucking die? It doesn't matter. Two, yeah. what they, whenever they went into the, like, the future after their confrontation, where it could have ended, in all honesty, it could have ended there. And then they have like the flash forward in, t- in time. 
Whenever you go to California to find Abby as Ellie and you come across this new biker gang that doesn't mean jack shit, they are so boring. They mean nothing. They have no impetus. They have no reason to be there. There's no history about them at all. No prior interactions. And there's these guys, this biker gang, alongside the Scars and the Wolves, who are part of Abby, Abby and Ellie's storyline. Why do you have three different factions just all of a sudden in there when we should just have maybe two or one at most as an enemy faction to worry about because you did three they're so spaced out and so less flavorful they have yeah. no impact on the entire story as a whole across two different characters Here's, three yeah. my last my last bit sorry go for it it could have improved this entire game by making us mismatch crisscross with abby and ellie play for a chapter as ellie play for a chapter as abby you go back and forth back and forth back and forth until the confrontation that would have been way more tense we wouldn't have known who dies who lives in each other's storylines god damn it naughty dog that is so basic to understand austin i feel your i feel your fervor for this game i feel your fervor <laughs> especially after how many hours you put in this bad boy 16 20 30 <laughs> so i feel your fervor but the problem with this type of storytelling is that it's very hard to pull off. It's it's a master stroke to pull off the Romeo and Juliet type of type of gameplay where you want Romeo and Juliet to have equal effect on the immersion and on the storytelling. But if you don't do it right, it's going to be 60-40, sometimes 70-30 in one direction or the other. You're not going to get full motivations or you're not going to get... Are, it's going to be set up in such a way that you're handicapping your own suspense and you're handicapping your own expectation of character growth. You know, like I always see video games as you're as a character player, you're the pebble being thrown into the pond, right? Mm -hmm. You splash and the repercussions of your splash affects the gameplay, affects the story, right? But if you're throwing three or four pebbles in there, it's become a jumbled mess. It's not a clean ripple. And what it sounds like from this game is that they failed to establish the clean ripple. Even if it's, you know what I mean? Even if you're trying to introduce multiple characters and tell multiple sides of a story, maybe this should have been part, maybe Abby's side of the story should have been part uh, part three rather than part two. Maybe yeah. You just, maybe you just tell it, or maybe Abby should have just been a DLC a DLC campaign. I, you know, it's, the yeah. story should be about Ellie, right? Well, She's our I main character now. I don't agree with that because I think, honestly, Abby could have been a really interesting set to have in comparison to Ellie because they both had different flaws. They're uh -huh. both very similar to each other, but they have different storylines in the end. Abby has more so a redemption arc than Ellie ever could have because Ellie is so obsessed with murder revenge. Abby yeah. got her revenge and is trying to move past it, but realizes her life is pretty much empty. Yeah, man. So, I, like, I think it's a great comparison to the two and how, in the end, both characters lose everything except Abby has one thing to go forward for. Abby has, Ellie has absolutely nothing. And I think that's a great comparison between the two. Also, uh, yeah. last big rant, why weren't the zombies more worrisome in this game? Because it stopped game, being about the It had the Walking Dead effect. It stopped being about the zombies. It's about the people. Uh, that's why I hate zombie Sucks. movies and games because they Sucks. never get it right. They always look past the zombies and that's boring. The zombies that is you know, the zombies become a barrier. They become a wall. It stops be it's like even Attack on Titan has this problem. The 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 the, the central threat which is causing the tension stops being the focal point of tension. We're the tension. <laughs> Yeah, but why that bother? If you can make this game set in the 1800s in the wild, wild west of America, and it could have been the same exact thing. And no zombies. A, and that's no a zombies. point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Sorry, that's a, no worries. Yeah, and that's a point. I was watching this uh, this interview with George George Romero, creator of the pretty much the creator of the zombie, um, the zombie uh, genre. genre. Thank you. And he was saying that to be honest, the zombies, or could be anything. It could be any natural disaster. The zombies could be any um, any external condition. The real story is how we deal with it. <laughs> it's, hmm. who, it's, it's how we deal with it. <laughs> it's, hmm. it's who who deals who handles it superbly. Who handles it horribly? Who handles it? Who has, who handles it truthfully? Who handles it deceptively? That's where the birth of all of his zombie stories came from. It's not necessarily the zombie. That was kind of a cause and effect. It was how the people 
dealt with this new normal, how they dealt with this new anxiety and who crumbles and who becomes a weapon and who becomes a shield. You know what I mean? And I thought that was fascinating. And you, But the thing is, that still has to be uh, a condition. It can't stop being a worry because then that falls apart. Because if, if your zombies aren't the focal point, if you're if your if your sky faring ant overlords aren't the, the worry, then why are the characters so stressed? <laughs> you know, so that's an excellent question. It has to be a balance. There has to be a solid balance of threat in in the response of threat. You know, and The Last of Us forgets about that because they're so worried about getting this personal story told that they lose that. And I haven't played this, mind you. And I'm not going to because I have my own reasons I don't want to play this game. Because uh, I I have a very hard time supporting assholes. And Druckmann seems like he's up there with like Randy Pitchford as like that's why I have God tier ass. Yeah, we're on we're on two different sides of the spectrum, right? Like mm-hmm. I'll play Borderlands D and try to forget that Randy Pitchford's gross, and but I won't play Last of Us because I don't want to support Neil Druckmann. And I don't want to support Randy Pitchford because they're both horrible human beings, but we just chose two different sides of the argument to be a part of. Honestly, and and neither of us are right or wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just oh yeah. It, it just it just depends on you know how much you want to play that game. You know, I I really want to play Borderlands Three, especially. I, I bought it on sale, so that was kind of my little you know f you to him. Like I didn't buy it sixty dollars. <laughs> you know, <laughs> still. I am having fun with the game, as I'm sure you had fun with The Last of Us. But as you as you're talking about, there apparently is glaring issues with the with the pacing of this game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, honestly, makes sense to me. It it, it makes total sense. Fair enough. Okay, I think we could cap it there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's fine by me. So yeah, I I enjoyed the gameplay. Story I had a lot of problems with. Yeah, uh, that's the hardest part to get right, my man. Pfft, hell yeah, it is. You can make a killer get. You can make a killer system. You make a killer gameplay, and that will save your game seven out of ten times. But mm-hmm. if the story is so jarring, you won't want to pick it up ever again. You're like, man, I left a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> you know, like, ugh. Yeah. Yeesh, you yeah. know. Agreed. Agreed. Ah, uh, anywho, so what would you rate it from zero to five? I would rate it like a three and a half. Ooh. That's like a barely it's, a passing grade, my man. It's still enjoyable, but it's not super. <sighs> I don't know. It's really hard to say, honestly. It's just there's, there's just a lot. There's okay. just a lot. You're still conflicted. You're still like, how long ago? Did, what did you beat it like last night? Uh, a week ago. Oh, so you had time to think about it. Okay. Can yeah, you... I've had time to digest. Wow. Get it together, Last of Us Part Three. No shit. <laughs> Whatever that may be, because it's going to it's going to exist in the PS5. Uh, my week. What did I do with my week? Um, watched some movies. Watched a bunch of older movies. Um, what did I watch? I watched Forty Eight Hours for the first time with Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy. Hmm. I haven't watched that since I was a kid. It's pretty nice. much a, it's pretty much about a. Uh, two th- two thieves, kind of like modern day outlaws, who are just going shooting up to town. And Nick Nolte has to recruit um, Eddie Murphy because he was part of his old, part of that that those outlaws old group. And it's very western. It's, it feels like a modern day western in a weird way, right? Um, just because of how, the pacing. A lot of things that happen in that movie that would never fly nowadays. A lot of expletives. <laughs> Nick Nolte is the most disgustingly just kind of. He says the most nastiest racial slurs on the planet in that movie. That kind of took me by surprise. Yeah. Yeah. And there was like this part of the movie where he's like, you know, all that stuff I was saying, all those nasty things, you know, it's just, it's just me being a cop and me having the, you know, me busting, you know, busting your britches a little bit. And I'm like, that same mentality still flies in 2020. (laughs) Yo, I was not expecting this movie to hit so hard. <laughs> Funny, exciting. Eddie Murphy of kill, of course, steals the show. Um, it's just, it was just really a strange film to watch. Um, also, this week I was actually able to uh, play Paper Mario. Uh, oh, the, which one? 
It's the Origami King. Okay. It's a brand okay. new game. Uh, how far did you get into that? Because my wife's playing that right now, actually. I just, I just unlocked the first ribbon, if that makes sense to you. The red ribbon? Mm-hmm. Has she, has she passed that part? I cannot say. She told me about it, but I have, don't know where she's at exactly. Okay, because I have some thoughts about this game. Um, nothing as fervent <laughs> as Last of Us 2. It is funny because I was kind of doing this with my hands. Ghost of Tsushima, Origami King. Ghost of Tsushima. And it's a weird... in two weird games to pit against each other because we we talk about Ghost of Tsushima in a, shortly after this. Mm-hmm. Um, but this game was kind. is kind of... It's like watching it's like watching nineteen eighties Nickelodeon. You know what I oh. mean? Oh, okay. Where as a kid it's the most sugary, beautiful. Um the graphics they pull off on this little system, the switch is amazing. Uh Paper Mario's simple, it's easy on the eyes. As if you've been listening, I've been I've been needing new glasses, so I, I didn't want to do anything as extensive as Ghost of Tsushima right now. I just wanted something I could chill and play and turn off and on. Um, beautifully done. The story is really fun and interesting. Um, about these, it reminds me of almost like Hellboy Two: The Golden Army, <laughs> We're about the brother and sister, king, princess, and prince. You know, oh that have, wow, okay. That have, that have like alternating, you know, thoughts on the future of the Mushroom Kingdom. You know, and Mario's just kind of, well, I'm in the middle. You know, he's just he's just there. <laughs> <laughs> um, the gameplay is the part where it falls apart. The gameplay is a little jarring. I was trying to figure it, it. In some parts, it's amazingly simple. In some parts, it's extremely complex. It's it's puzzle based with with rhythmic uh, responses. So it's like playing a, it's like playing online in a fighting game where you'll hit a random Goomba. And you may get someone who picked up the game five minutes ago, or you may get Daigo, the beast, you know? And the game, does, there's no difficulty setting. So some puzzles are, you solve it in two seconds, so some puzzles, it's just like, what? <laughs> You're, it splits your brain in half. And then it's on a clock, so you have 30 seconds to make a choice. And it's like, uh, I don't feel like thinking. All right, I'm just going to do that. And you get jacked up by the game. So the, the, the battle system is just really not my cup of tea. But I'm willing to power through it. And oh my god, the boss battle is a, it's its own system. And it's completely different than all the other systems you've encountered. And it's the most convoluted, complex thing I've ever played in my life. I have seen that, and apparently it's really, really fun, though. It's once you get the hang of it. But it took me... I might as well have been playing a Final Fantasy VII hidden boss. I might, <laughs> I might as well have been playing Ruby Weapon. Pretty much. I, I was going against this one boss for like 45 minutes because I couldn't wrap my brain around the arrow system that it had. I was like, I was, it, just, my, it just wasn't clicking. And I just was like, I don't know what to do. I'm getting, a, I'm, my, I'm like, I'm like, Brian, I don't feel so good. My nose starts bleeding. And I'm just like, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> let me take a break. I need to not look at this for a second. Um, but overall, the game is really fun. Um, having a ball with it. Luigi's in it. I get to do little voices. To myself and no one can hear you know what i mean because there's a lot well, of text a, reading that's concerning you started talking to yourself i'm not i'm talking to the screen i'm acting it out austin i'm not talking <laughs> the, the guitar is out of tune <laughs> it's anyway. not my fault anyway um <laughs> having, a, having a fun blast with that um and lastly i'm starting to complete i'm starting to work on operation greenhorn i'm sure you know about that austin mm-hmm and I'm in my backyard, and I'm building the 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 base of operations for Operation Greenhorn, which is my revival of building Gundam model kits. You got the, all the equipment you need. You got like a fancy camera to record it all with. Too. Don't have the camera yet. That's going to be the most expensive part, and I have to save up for that. Yeah, that'll be the most ex- arguably the most expensive. So you can't get like a you can't get like a streaming camera. It's got to be like an, nope. a, like an official like camera with connectivity to your computer, so you yep. can record directly into it through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Still don't know how I'm going to do that. I'm still it... ironing out that part. All right, now I'm focusing on. Let me just get one kit built so I can get in the hang of things. Um, but I do want to re- record my efforts. So I'm working on it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, man. It's it's really. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be real weird. Yes, it's baking my it's baking my noodle, man. 
So uh, bacon your noodle. <laughs> yeah, man, it, it's it's crisp in my bacon, dude. So I'm like, okay, I picked out the kit I'm gonna do. Um, everything's all set up, I'm waiting for stuff to come in the mail, you know, and it's just very. It's, it's, it's all your fault. It's what it boils down to. <laughs> Don't you blame me for your own weakness? Not weakness. It was like, I mean, I mean, we're in a, we're in a pandemic. I can't go nowhere. Dog. I need something to do. <laughs> well, guess what? Building Gundam is building Gunpla. Sorry for people Gun- who do not know. Gunpla Gun- is a shorthand Gun- for Gundam plastic models. Gun- it is a Gun- very, Gun- very nice, nice, nice hobby where you start, you start small, you build a, uh, a lot of different little bits here and there. Yep. You start up really big. Yep. And the next thing you know, you're 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 talking to the Libyans, trying to, you know, purchase you know, weapons grade plutonium to power your actually functioning gunpla. You know. <laughs> and, and next so, thing you you get shot up, and this kid jumps into your car and goes back to the future. So what what models are you starting with now? What grade are you starting with? Like a perfect grade, essentially, or I'm starting with a master grade. Um, I found mm. a nice cheap endless waltz heavy arms that I'm gonna do. Oh yeah, I'd like the orange and white one. Yep, yeah, but I'm gonna do the movie version where it's dark. It's it's a midnight blue. And, oh, and there's I, that's actually that, that one's actually out there. I know. Mark I'm gonna two. as practice. I'm gonna do a color swap. Ah. I'm gonna go from light. To, I'm gonna go from light to dark and see if I can pull it off. Well, the Mark Two also has two uh, Gatling gun on each uh, on each arm. The Mark I, One just has one. I know, so I'm actually going to go to um, New Type and buy the second gun part s- separately. Oh, is New Type that that online retailer? Yep, it's uh, really the only place you can get really specific parts like that. Fair, fair, uh, fair, fair, I, fair. And plus, I got to order from there anyway because I need to get the the water logo, um, the the watermark logos, so and not the stickers. Because those <laughs> will come in the box. Okay, and, that makes sense. Because I can't not. If I'm going to be doing full scale painting, primering, um, you know, etching, all that crazy stuff you have to do, I might as well go whole, whole ham and not put stickers on it. No. Oh yeah, of course. No, <laughs> I refuse. You know, that's like putting a uh, that's like uh, making this perfect you know souffle and putting Larry seasoning salt on top. You know, it's just... <laughs> done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> all right, eat it. That's a good but, way to put it. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's that's been my week, man. Well, and why also, don't you, like, why, 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 why don't you just send a little uh, love my way and send me a little Gundam model so I can do it with you, too? You know what? I'm already in that mood. I'm going to send you a <laughs> random one. I'm going to send you a oh, random one, dude. Oh, 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 man. There's some bad ones out there, though. I know. I'm going to send you something crazy. I don't know if it's going to be crazy in the sense that, oh, this is a little poop hut, you know, Gundam model. I'm going to send you some God tier one and make you break your brain on it. Oh, that'd be pretty fun, actually. I have to admit. <laughs> Michael sent me this perfect grade Barbados Gundam. I don't know what, where do I start? Ooh, man, that'd be rough for me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you have to be very careful because I don't want to waste money, dude. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, Jesus. Anywho, uh, we want to talk about Ghost of Tsushima real yeah, quick? Yeah, I've been, I've watched, I pretty much know all of Ghost of Tsushima. I know, so, I, you know, we don't I will have to say, do spoilers. But, this game, yeah. people, people, if you want to play a good PS4 game, the last PS4 game for this generation, go play Ghost of Tsushima. It is so good. Ghost of Tsushima is the perfect closing remark on the PS4 as a system. The PS4 had a really good run. The PS4 yes. had some really good games on it. Yes. I'm going to compare this run to like the PS2 era. The PS2 had some crazy bangers on it. Like this may be the best, the best generation of PlayStation ever. It had some crazy games on it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Bloodborne, Spider Man, God of War, um, you know what I mean? Like just in, insane exclusives, dude. And Ghost of oh. you know, and there's always that one game at the end of the at the end of a game generation. That is that game's highest possible bar. I think God of War 3 was that for the PS3. Yep. You know what I mean? God of War 3 was this crazy... Yeah, this is... We're breaking the system now. Like, this is the highest it could possibly go. Um, and Ghost of Tsushima plays like a PS5 game. It does. It really does. Yeah. It's, it's just so much better than what you expect it to be. No lag. Pure 30. 
load times are almost non-existent. Graphically, we can't even talk about it. Graphically, this game is the most beautiful game I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, Agreed. Like, like, Red Dead Redemption 2 is probably, fid- like, graphically, f- fidelity-wise, probably crisper. But Red Dead Redemption 2, in my opinion, is a wet mop, you know what I mean, in comparison to this smorgasbord of colors and aesthetics. It's just, this game is such a love letter, dude. It's it's the biggest love letter. It is, it's so, it's so nice. And it's, it's so like gangbusters out in uh, Japan. Yeah, man, they love it. They ultra love it. And that's rare because this is, a, you know, and I was watching a review and someone called it a hamburger um, a hamburger Japanese game, you know, you know, kind of like a hamburger samurai. That's what they called it. <laughs> and similar to the spaghetti Western, you know what I mean? Like the, for, you know, good, the good, the bad, the ugly, where these Italians, you know, making their version of the American West, right? Whereas here is the us Americans are making a version of samurai feudal Japan. And we did it so right. Or as Sucker Punch did it so right that, Glorious Nippon is just clapping their hands. They're like, oh, "You did it! Oh, you did it! <laughs> you did it! You did it! Yatta!" You know, <laughs> exactly. You know, so it's like the game has its flaws. Like, I personally, and I'm not no spoilers, of course, but I don't like Jin as a character. Like, as a character, like he's not I, my favorite character of the game. That's I'll fair. I put it like that. As as the R. As our voice, as our protagonist, he's a little too Mary Sue for me, you know. Just a little, just a little. No, I to- I totally get it. Like it's totally fine to like not like him terribly much. He's not Alice levels. He's not like Resident Evil Alice levels where he's infallible. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The first hour of that game, all Jin is doing is making mistakes. <laughs> you know? That's actually very, very fair. The first hour of that game, dude. <laughs> All Jin is doing is like blowing it, but um, I think the, the the pacing of the game is beautiful. I think what the game has you do uh, in the world that you inhabit, this open world, non chugging mecha that you're just running around, is amazing, dude. It's 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 it's, it's, it's a, almost a flawless execution of their plan. Um, the costuming. The off, you know, and this is a romanticized version of Japan. This is this is not ultra real world. Of course, it can't be, right? Right, right. You know, but it's the way they have, have approached it as this romanticized Shoshima, this island, is just something I've never seen before. You know what I mean? And I'll, and do you think this game will have sequels? Based, it can't really <laughs> because it's based on real world events. Um, you know? hard to really say <laughs> yeah it's hard to like <laughs> World War 3 that didn't happen did it <laughs> you know and he, let's, you, let's you Wolfenstein it and just start making up history oh, that'd be kind of funny to be fair you know that'd be kind of funny <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima Blood Dragon <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean you just give you just, and that's what I want I want I want an American you know dude from the west to show up on Tsushima with a gun <laughs> and even though that I know that's, that's, that's chrono, chrono, uh, um, uh, chronologically chron- chronologically inaccurate, I just uh, feel your hands, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Jen's like, what? <laughs> okay, I will anyway. say we probably do need to move on because we've been talking about this for a hot minute. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah, what are your thoughts? Uh, I love it. It's a great game. I need to explore a lot more because I'm in Act 2, and apparently I've unlocked only a portion of the map I need. Oh, fun. You're just getting started. Yeah, no joke. Uh, what are your first impressions? It, the cinematography and sound and design are all beautiful. I can't wait to play this game on PS5 one day in Akira Kurosawa mode. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting until I can play it on PS5. Well, I'm, well, I should say, I'm already playing it like that. I just need to see if there's, like, any improvements or if I should just wait for PS5 for the color version, essentially. Yep, that's what I'm chilling on. I'm like, I can't, okay. It's, this will probably be, I'm sure that an up version of this will be a launch title for PS5. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of their biggest games are probably going to be a, here, now play God of War in Solid 60, 
right? You know. Oh, oh. Also, part of my week. Uh, I talked about this with Brant King of Miss. God, fuck you, Atlas Games, you sons of bitches, <laughs> giving us giving us Shin Megami Tensei five next year, but Shin Megami Tensei three is six months later. And you won't give us Persona. <laughs> fuck you guys. I you love they, you. You know they don't like you, right? <laughs> Yeah, because I'm like apparently just a dirty, dirty Westerner. I I, I can't have games I love on PS5. <laughs> the, the, Fuck you, the, Atlas Games. I love you, but god damn it. You know they have to be difficult, right? <laughs> they can't just. You can't just take me on one date, dude. You have to. You have to splurge me with gifts. You know. Which, why is this the way? Oh the, man, did Atlas get... is. Yeah. Atlas is. We're moving on. Anyway, so in this week, besides that, what happened last week at the podcast episode, to be oddly fair, uh, what happened this week is a lot, actually, isn't it? Yep, we have in so much a lot that we actually have to do a, a yay or nay, because we have just way too much news to talk about this week. Um, yeah. This is, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think this, this week warrants a, a yay or nay type of news breakdown. So... Uh, how this works is that I'm going to throw out a news topic and Austin has the opportunity to say, yay, we'll talk about it for a moment, or nay, we're moving right on. And I have the option to use one veto if I really want to talk about it. But once I use that veto, that's it. Um, so I have to be very careful what I choose to veto if I want to veto. Now, to be to be um, completely transparent, I've never had to use a veto. <laughs> ever <laughs> so we'll kind of see how that goes um this week uh xbox had their huge game announcement and there are there's a lot of gaming news but because there's so much gaming news i kind of want to work backwards and go through our movies tv news first before we go into gaming does that make sense austin that's fair that's fair that's fair because i rather go on on a bang than then talk about these uh, movies and TV and be like, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, no, when they make the podcast. Explode. I totally agree, which is like why we should do them first. Yeah, but just, just knock them out and then we can go over. Oh, the... two fair okay. Hmm? Hmm? We, I think we're starting to like just really overlap each other at this point. <laughs> well, that's, that's part of the, um, that's part of the sinking process, man. If we're going to, if we're going to run, you know, this Jaeger, our brains have to go into the drift, dude. You know? Oh, good God. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the drift? All right, let's, let's knock these out. Um, Austin just added uh, uh, one at the, at, the, at the bleeding edge hour, dog. Um, so we're going to talk about that right now. We're going into the news. News, 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 news. Remember, there was a show called Blue's Clues. Um... Let's start it. Yay or nay? Regis Philbin passes passes away. Was it due to corona complications? Yay and yes. He had COVID and complications caused this, I think, 83 or 88-year-old man to pass away recently. A chihuahua, man. To be fair, he had a very full life. Yeah. It might have been cut short, sadly, but... This man left a huge legacy on TV. Yeah, the biggest legacy, man. Regis, man. Who, who didn't hear Regis's voice? At, and the thing is, he was, he was generation spanning. You know what I mean? Like, I knew Regis from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Am I, am I right to think that? Was he on that? Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? You know? I, it's just, I remember watching that show all the time as a kid. It was so wild. I want to it's like it's it. like it was like Jeopardy, but better. It was hyper. It was like if Jeopardy was Street Fighter Two, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire it was like Marvel vs. Capcom Two. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything moving faster and brighter lights and craziness, you know? Yeah. So, but the interest to keep things brief but direct. It's sad. Hope his family's doing well because that is not pretty. Not, uh, you know, with death comes life. I'm sure there's a little Philbin running around. The estate somewhere, you know, the antelope eat the grass, all that great stuff, you know. Oh, so yeah. happy trails to you until we see see you again, Regis, and I hope it's somewhere out there, Kathy Lee is drinking her coffee and reminiscing about the good times. Oh, she definitely is. Gotta be, yay or nay? 
Dave Franco will portray Vanilla Ice in a biopic to the extreme. Ice, there, ice baby. Mm, 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 is there mm. anything to say about Vanilla Ice? Dude flips houses now. Go, Ninja. Go, Ninja. Go. Go. Oh, go. That's all. That's all I got. If they don't talk, I'm, a, I'm going to watch this biopic only because I want them to mention Ninja Turtles too. There's no mention of Ninja Turtles too. I'm turning the shit off. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn it off. Throw my TV out the window. Uh, he danced with the Ninja Turtles on stage in a movie. Who said? Who could say they did that? I don't know, man. This is just so freaking weird. Nickelodeon's. Nickelodeon's Star Trek Prodigy animated series announced. Yay or nay? Um, uh, eh? I'm so happy and mad about this at the same time. I didn't expect Star Trek to be marketed towards children now. Let's put it that way. They just don't know what to do with it. They really don't. <laughs> they just don't. The spirit of Gene Roddenberry hasn't touched this thing in decades, dude. Oh, you mean like the, at the point where Seth MacFarlane made a better Star Trek series than Star Trek did? Is it? Okay. And this is a way bigger question. I mean, we don't have to go into it. Isn't it strange that a lot of these pioneers from years past have lost touch with the, what they've created to the point where the fans have grown to become the creators that outdo and out and, you know, and outperform and actually encapsulate the spirit of what they're trying to do? It's because... They're so out of touch. It's because production studios only care about money, not about creative liberties and creative spirits. It's so which is frustrating. Why Star Wars, which is why Star Wars. Uh, it's so frustrating. Moving, yeah, moving I, on. I, I, yeah, Star Wars is sad now. We don't talk about Star Wars unless we have to. Um, Ray and Kylo Ren kiss, and they should have killed each other for it. I poisoned my lips. I poisoned my lips as well. <laughs> no! Good uh, riddance! Anyway. Good riddance. The boy is renewed for season three. I'm already. so excited. Because like, season two isn't even out yet. Holy crap, people. This is so good news. That's good news. I'm and, really excited for season two. This <gasps> week, that, I think. This week, <gasps> I think. Yes, it is. And I, yeah. this makes me excited because this means if Amazon continues their streak, that means the Cimmerillion show they're making next year is going to be good. The Cimmerillion. It depends on the showrunners, my man. And it also depends. It might make the Wheel of Time series in 2022 or 4 really, really good as well. Not all that glimmers is gold. <laughs> Fuck, if they, make, if, they make a good, if they make a good Wheel of Time, I'll be just, like, so happy. That'd be a moneymaker if they do it right. But Wheel of Time, like Dune, is real easy to F up. Oh, entirely. And the I, easiest I've, to F up. I've read the series, like, five times. I know exactly how they can screw it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Christ. Are you a Homelander? No. I'm not a Homelander either. I'm not a fan. No. I'm a fan of his character because he's freaking terrifying. But he, if I was, if I lived in the boys' universe, I would not have his toy as a kid. You know. No, Homelander is got he. Ugh, he's just a psychopath with Superman powers. That's all. He's the is. Plutonian. If you ever read, there's this comic out there called Irredeemable, and it's about a supervillain named the the the, Plut- the Plutonian, and he's just evil ass Superman. That's pretty good. And he assassinates people based on their heartbeat. Jesus. <laughs> he just he just listens out for the heartbeat. <laughs> he knows exactly where you are. It's real fun. Oh, that's really <laughs> crazy. Okay. Forget all that. Forget all that noise. We're talking about video game news now. You can't yay this. You can't nay this. G4 returns, baby. That is actually super surprising, I have to admit. G4 that is, the is most coming surprising. back, dude. Attack of the Show and X-Play with Adam Sessler? Yeah, please. I love Adam. Adam is like a, a, a celebrity within the game world. Morgan Webb, Adam Sessler, X-Play, Attack of the Show. Oh, dude. they got Morgan? They got Morgan back? All I heard was Adam. I'm, I'm hearing... I'm hearing things, man. I'm hearing things, dude. I'm hearing Olivia Munn's coming back for Attack of the Show. Kevin oh, Perella. wow. I'm hearing wow. things, man. It's getting crazy. Cinema Tech, where they would show video game trailers for like half an hour. Dude. Oh, wow. That is that is surprising. Oh, remember man. When, remember when Adam had hair? He doesn't. 
<laughs> remember when? Remember when? Remember when, remember when Olivia Munn was just this geeky kind of like, but also posh co-host, not knowing of her future, you know what I'm saying? And now she's like a legit actress. Now she's a legit actress star in, you know, I, I okay, G4 was one of those things that I just had on TV 24 hours a day. It was, I mean, I used to watch really G4 good. before it became cops and became it all gross and be, you know what I mean? Back when it was pure, you know? With the t- w- yes. What was that show with Tommy Tellerico and that other dude, and they would do game reviews? Um, Fuck, I can't remember. I cannot tell you. Dude, I can't remember. That, that show was, that, that channel was so awesome. That cha- It was nothing like it. G4 was all video games all the time. And this is before the internet was like super big, like was the way it is now. So yeah. you have a lot of your info from G4. Yeah, exactly. You know Jesus. what I mean? I, it was, it's gonna be interesting to see how they come back from this, honestly. I don't know I don't think it's gonna be in a traditional sense. Maybe G four is gonna become like an IGN kind of channel. Or maybe it's just gonna become a YouTube thing. Like how do you you can't I don't think they'll be on cable because cable is dead. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I, I remember seeing that tweet and I remember like the first thing I saw was your buddy Brian's like reaction was the very first comment I saw. It's like yeah. <laughs> He struck while he struck while the iron iron was fresh out of the fucking anvil. Yeah, man, he the one who put me on it. I was like, "What? For <laughs> real? What? Yeah, no joke." And you see like IGN in the comments going, "Uh." uh <laughs> and then Kevin Prayer was like, "What? I was asleep. What happened?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> like Christ. This is my news of the week. I'm That's, so happy. It's it's so interesting. I can't wait to see it happen. G four is back, dude. That's so, so hype. You know what is also back and come back strong? Apparently, is Halo Infinite. Okay, so Microsoft had their big um, showcase of video yeah, games, just like how PlayStation did. Yeah, but like it's yeah, it, it, yeah. And I got some strong opinions on this showcase, dude. It's lukewarm. Mm, it's you know what it Very is. Very lukewarm. It feels like a half measure. Like the true Xbox One X games were not shown today. That day, nah, nah. These every game shown are half measures. Um, that could be played on both the Xbox One and the new system. Exactly. Because Halo Infinite, while it looks clean, does not look next-gen. It does not look next-gen at all. It Dude. does not in any way. It's it's very weird. It Dude. looks like it belongs on the, on the Xbox One slash PS4 kind of generation. It doesn't look new. No. Like, you know what it was? I was feeling it until that stupid boss... Stuck his big fat face in the camera. I mean, for the like, Shrek? Yeah, for like three minutes. You got to see how non detailed he was. Hey, uh... That's what killed. I was like, this is not H. This is not. Like, Ghost of Tsushima has better graphics than that. Yep. You know, so much, the, uh, so much for the sex for the sex box to have better components and graphics and whatnot compared to the PS5. That's what I'm thinking. Like, that's not. That's, this is weird. That's not a, a sex box game, dude. There's no way. <laughs> You can't tell me that Hellblade. Remember, remember the launch for Hellblade. That oh, video, yeah. that mess looked like it was real life, dude. Mm-hmm. And then you show me Gorilla Grodd here, and he's like, <laughs> "Gorilla Grodd's a good way to put it." <laughs> Burn your fangs! <laughs> like somebody just get this Muppet off the screen, dude. <sighs> oh, anti-hype, dog. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's like, it's like you go to the doctor and like to get milked, and they just kind of like stick a finger up the butt and go. Pfft. You're done. You're done. Hey, that's on you, man. You, don't, like, you, oh, you donated to the sperm bank today. You're done. You're done. You didn't even offer me dinner, dog. <sighs> but uh, what, what got me really riled up with that was Dark Warhammer 40k Dark Tie. Oh, yay or nay? Yay, yay, yay! By Fat Shark Games, creators of Vermintide and Vermintide 2, a game about going through waves of enemies as Warhammer 40k universe characters, such as a witch hunter, a sorceress. A dwarven ranger, sorry, an elven ranger and a dwarf warrior. You play as a bunch of people going through Warhammer 40k about this, including most likely an Ogryn, huge big warrior guy, Imperial Guard, likely a Dexter Scandicus, and others as Inquisition agents going against the Agents of Chaos, Eldar, Orcs, you name it. You got it, baby. We're going good. I'm very ignorant to the Warhammer 40k ethos, but this sounds a lot like Gauntlet to me, and I'm down with that. It's it's exactly, it's the same thing. Is it as just Gauntlet? Thing. No, it's it's just Vermintide. Okay, Vermintide so was a good game. Okay. It's the same okay. developer, just a different universe. Okay, okay. It's 
it's going to be worth it, and I cannot wait. Holy okay. crap. Hopefully we can play that. Uh, um, hopefully it'll be cross-platform. I think they're going to intend to make it so. I think it's going to be PS5, Xbox, PC. So we'll have to wait and see. Okay. Um, we could talk about this real quick. Um, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, PS4's fastest-selling first-party game in its debut. Yay or nay? I mean, there's only a few sentences to say. Yay. Yay. It's a great game. Makes great sense. Game. Japan loves it. It's yeah. the fastest selling Japan, uh, game in Japan right now, overall. Yeah. Uh, final bow for PS4. Sounds good, you know. Sucker Punch came in strong in the generation, and they are leaving just as strongly, if not Su- better. Sucker Punch is one of those studios, along with Insomniac, along with Obsidian, along with Respawn, can do no wrong in my eyes. You tell me they're making yeah. a game, I'm going to check it out. Yep. It used to be that way for me and Naughty Dog for like Jack and Dexter and Crash Bandicoot, but then they started making mistakes. It's like, Ooh. womp womp, like, like firing one of your lead writers so she can go to, so she can go be sent to Star Wars to be fired again, or like making a horrible horrible crunch and horrible horrible atmosphere for workers to never like be happy. Video game paradise. Um, Fable <laughs> Xbox, <laughs> Fable Xbox Series X announcement trailer, which didn't give us Jack Dilly to go off of. Nope, didn't tell us a damn thing. It it's might as well be the Elder Scrolls six, you know, the exactly. six image. That's all it was. But it's like, da da da, da 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 It exists. Stop bothering us about it. <laughs> it's and it's pre- like, a, oh, go go screw you, man. Yeah, this is it's, bad. It's more than nothing, but at least people could shut up about it. This is, a, this is like, this value of the trailer is represented as zero over zero. And that's yeah. it. There's nope. like nothing to gain, nothing to lose. It exists. We're, we, it's on our minds. <laughs> on our minds. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're thinking about it, we're guys. Thinking Don't about worry. it, guys. Don't worry. You'll Christ. see something in about six years. Christ. Anyway. She's on a cracker. Um, <sighs> Fantasy Star Online 2. I do not care about this it's weird funny. MMO. I care because of its promise. They're <sighs> saying, okay, brief history. Find a. Fantasy Star Online 2 is an old-ass game that's never been brought to the West because, you know, the developers thought the Americans didn't care. No, we ultra-care. A lot of us had Dreamcast. A lot of us love Fantasy Star. Another bad take from Japan. Never came over. So people have had to hack into it. Uh, people have had to break and corrupt their computers to get this thing running. Been a big pain in the ass for, what, five, six years now that the game's been out. Now, what's technically... Uh, is going on with this game. It's technically, this is F- Fantasy Star Online 3. It's pretty much what this is at its core. But they're keeping the Fantasy Star Online 2 name only because marketing-wise, you'll be, you know, there's an alienation in numbered sequels. You know what I mean? There's always an alienation in, in numbered sequels, especially mm-hmm. in MMOs. You know what I mean? So they're yeah. like, okay, we're just going to keep the name, call it New Genesis. What they're saying this is, is... Think about Final Fantasy XIV to Final Fantasy A Realm Reborn. Yeah, I can see that. And think about Monster Hunter um, Ultimate to Monster Hunter World. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. This is what that is. It's a, It still keeps all the bones of the original, but it's boosting it and enhancing it so much that it's, it's pretty much its own different game. And if it's fun, it may be a console seller for a lot of people. Because apparently Fantasy Star Online 2 is huge in anywhere but the U.S. And if it's fun, and if it runs good, if it's a solid 60 on sex box, it may be something worth buying. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, mm. eh. I'm not about it. I'll just say that now. I'm not really about it. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. The medium. Story and gameplay. Yeah. That. Name does look interesting like the uh one of the shots of like the girl being dragged down with all those like little finger bones hands and whatnot Fingers. it was very much like how do you put it it looked like the creepy crawly chest burster hand Ali- and hand aliens yeah um the face huggers yeah, yeah face huggers thank you creepy crawlers i'm getting a lot of uh no way out vibes from this game i could see that you know, two player. You're both going through the same uh, area, but in two different dimensions. Very Silent Hill inspired. Um, one, for some reason, looks like it's Dante from Devil May Cry. <laughs> one has the Dante Devil May Cry hair, 
and the other one's normal. And like barbed wire over her hand. Yeah, and she's barbed cutting wire. like and she's cutting like flesh walls open and like running to crosses and yeah, yeah it's just very it's very edge lordy a little bit. But it is, but like you have to have the kind of edge lord feel to like be appropriately placed in the hellscape. Yeah, and is this a hellscape though? Is this some kind of rot universe? We don't know, man. All we know is there's going to be a big boss where half the screen is just his torso, arms, and head. <laughs> you have to fight it. <laughs> I mean, that's that 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 always happens. That that's always it. happens. <laughs> it's going to happen again. I can almost promise it. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing more about this. Hopefully, it's not just singular. It's not. Con- it's not going to remain singular on the Xbox. Let's put it that way. There's no way it's nope. going to happen. No, which I'm okay with, because yeah. Xbox is not about exclusives. Shut up, guys. Tetris Effect Connect, it looks awesome. <laughs> and- Tetris Effect Connect, it looks awesome. <laughs> nay. Straight up, you're, nay. You're not a Tetris boy? Nah. It's it's Tetris Effect with, with Tetris 99 mixed together. You bastard. Um, we nay, must move dude. on. We must move on. <laughs> I'm going to say Mike G fully supports that message. I, I want to pick. That looks like fun. It's not a console seller. If it's free, I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. Stalker 2. I don't know what this is. Uh, I mean, I don't do know we what have Stalker to talk about is. this? Do we have to talk about this? Because I've never paid attention to Stalker. and I really, really do not care. I don't know. It was a I CG have re- trailer. I have, how about I, this? I, have, I have replacement news. Will that work for you? Okay. We've we've okay. We've talked about soccer too. It's a nay. We both just don't care about it. I'm yeah, sure there's true. huge soccer fans out there. I respect and adore you, but it's, I've never I have no context for this, and they didn't give the, me any. They're Russian know? fans, so you just got to go seek a blot and just like drink vodka, and you'll appease them. I will drink vodka in their name today. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. Go to the freezer. Anywho, uh, how about this replacement news? Uh, Final Fantasy. 14 5.3 patch updated uh you can fly around the base game when that happens next month yep and you can get a free trial all the way up to level 60 at the end of heaven's word i'm not a big fan of xp boost like that that's you're cutting out so much it's not an xp boost. It's, no it's not an xp boost the game is totally free for players up to level 60 oh that's a video game that's a free that's video a hundred game. hours that's of a video f- game. that's a free video game <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with arguably one of the best storylines of all time. Because that does that stop at Heaven's Ward? It stops at the very end of Heaven's Ward, three point five yeah. six. Because that's where the that's that. If I remember after, correctly, after 60, Need, after, after Need Hog, yeah, yeah. After, level sixty is the end of Heaven's Ward, right? Yeah, it goes all the way past it to the patch updates, all the way through the shadows of the Warriors of Darkness and the end of Need Hog story. And right at the beginning of Stormblood, right? Yep. That's a video game, dude. That's a huge. That's a free video goal. game. Yeah, people. If you want a free Final Fantasy game, fucking go get that, that now. That is no, what you not, tell not the. Now, fr- no, sorry, not now. Next month. Sorry. Next month. That is what you tell the friend who's been wanting to play but didn't want to pay a prescription a subscription. Exactly. Like, dude, it's a free I will game. walk you through it. Join our free company. We'll get you to sixty. If you still like the game, play with us. If you don't like the game, you'll know by you will know if you like the game by or not by level sixty. A hundred percent. I, I guarantee I'll it. I'll say this real quick. I love the meme. I saw somebody of like they're like t- like Square Enix tentatively putting out ideas for Heaven's Words. Like church bad, church bad. dragons good. Good. And some like warm option, warm audience replies. And then somebody goes, "The church is evil because they won't let you fuck dragons." And the audience just goes wild. Yeah, <laughs> it explodes. That's Heaven's Word, pretty much. That's all Heaven's Word's about. Exactly. Church oh, okay. bad, I... dragons fuckable. Exactly. Gotta yeah. have sex. Gotta make little scale babies. The scale. The, they have to be scale bound. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that game's dead. Yeah, uh, and hmm? oh, Jesus Christ, that makes me so sad. I got sidetracked. I can't even say anything anymore. Uh huh. You defeated yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hoisted by your own petard. Uh, the Outer Worlds Peril on Gorgon DLC. I need to get this game. It's so good. It's so good. It's my game of the year. The year it came out. It's so good. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's, I need to, it scratches I need, all the itches, dog. God, I need to. I, I need to get this on sale, dude. It scratches the Mass Effect itch. It scratches the KOTOR itch. And the Obsidian itch. And it scratches the uh, Fallout New Vegas <laughs> itch all at the same time. <laughs> it's the best game yep. ever. I have two created characters in this game. I thought that this was a one and done. 
and I, my brain kind of compartmentalized it that way. But now that we're getting DLC, I'm more than excited. I'm jumping on this the second it comes out. Yeah, the second to, it comes out, I need to. I need to get into this game. Uh, what, it's what so. Play? Hmm? Well, I'll need to play this. It's so. It's so fun. I. I. Not no. I. I talked my way out of a full boss fight. <laughs> That's amazing. There was a scene where these troopers were gonna were were um were gonna um um raid your ship, right? And they're at the door. They're like, open the door, and we only kill half of you, right? <laughs> like, like real stuff is about to jump off. And I was like, well, if you think about it this way, <laughs> I just started. We just having a conversation. It was like, money. I like money. Yeah, I'll just pay you, and then I'll pay you. Let's say fifty credits a month. Just to keep you happy, my dude. That sounds like a plan. You know what? You're a nice guy. We're not going to raid your ship. You know what? In fact, we're going to leave one of our best guns at the at the gate because you know what? I think you'll need it later. <laughs> that, was, that was the boss fight. That's hilarious. <laughs> awesome. All because, especially with these games, I always spec out speech and, and charisma because you never know. Mm-hmm. Make your, no matter what you're doing, make sure that your speech and, speech and charisma are on point because you never know. Very, Man, very much like Divinity Original Sin, Divinity Original Sin Two. You gotta, you gotta max out the charisma points because you get some bonuses. You get bonuses, and you get, you get, you get experiences that other people won't because they're just gonna run gun it through. <sighs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Play that, man. If I have any way for, don't play it on Switch though. Oh mm-hmm. no, nah, it's bad. Don't play it on Switch though. Don't do it. All right, and I'm I'm got to like put another nay out there, my boy, because State of the K, <laughs> State of the K, God, who wasn't cares? State of the K like a trash fire when it came out? Like, has the State of the K been a trash fire? Always. I mean, I've never <laughs> ever mean, like, not like not, not like gameplay wise, like the game just doesn't run. I've heard so many weird things about State of the K. I mean, it's, it's not like a ninety one percent on Steam or like whatever, something like that. But God, I'm tired of zombies. Because no one does zombies right except for uh, the people who are already dead. No, not uh, 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 Dying Light. Dying Light did it right. Dying Light did do it right. And Dying Light did not... it right, but that's all that. Because aren't we getting another that. Dying Light game soon? I think so. Actually, next generation. Yeah, I'll, I'll play that. I'll, I will play that. But like games like Dead Island or Save the Cape, man, nah, nah, y'all, y'all, nah, 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 <laughs> nah, I'm on that. Nah, motherfucker, nah, nah. <laughs> We're not talking about it. The the black woman roared at the, the only thing I like about the whole trailer is that when that lady roared at the at the wolf and the wolf didn't want none of it. <laughs> the wolf was like, Shit, I'm out. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. She's okay, been so through. She's been through it. In replacement news, there has been confirmations with an interview with Hideo Kojima that he is in talks currently with Junji Ito for a new mm-hmm. horror game. That came out yesterday. I don't think you saw that. I didn't. Yeah, he's said he's in talks currently with Junji. And considering how much they liked working with each other for Silent Hill PT, I can imagine what business they can come up with. Can we get that that can we get that Junji Ito Kojima sandwich with a little bit of Guillermo del Toro Hochata on the side? Can we, <sighs> can we just sneak him in? God, Can we give just me sneak some... him in a little God, tasty would... beverage to wash down that. It's like it's gonna be like a slimy horchata with like tongues and tentacles, but it's gonna be yeah, so it's good. Gonna, it's gonna be so beautiful though. It's gonna have colors in it and shit. Oh man, I can't. It's gonna be like the fisherman's wife of sandwiches. <laughs> oh jeez, why do you have to mention the fisherman's <laughs> wife on this podcast? I didn't need that visual anyway. Because it is classic Japanese art. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to even explain <laughs> that. You do the homework on that one, Nerdiverse. Oh, Dios mio. Uh, anything, I'm becoming a big fan of Hideo, Hideo Kojima, even bigger fan, because this dude has all the limiters are off. He's kind of he's kind of getting a car and plot to do whatever he wants. And Death Stranding is a hidden gem that will be revered for decades because it pretty much told the future. <laughs> I want Hideo Kojima to make a game where he, he always shits. tells the future. I want him to shit over Konami. I want him to like spread Konami over the butt cheeks of some game and make them just the absolute worst. And I want Sony to give him all the money possible needed you know to what's do funny? so. Funny, I thought that's what Death Stranding was going to be, but it wasn't. It, uh, nope. 
he was there's really no shade and i thought there was going to be shade maybe he's above the shade maybe the shade got cut i don't know i was expecting it in death stranding He's an older guy. He's like 60. I guess he's just over it. Maybe he's just over it. Maybe maybe that breakup wasn't as, was more applicable than we thought. Maybe it just looked real dusty because Konami's garbage. But maybe okay. the breakup was, wasn't as bad. Maybe he got so, paid. So first off, Hideo Kojima is also 56 years old. I just looked that up. That's not a bad age. He's still got a lot of creative days ahead of him. He there. looks pretty good, well, honestly. Yeah, yeah. He's, he hasn't. He's, he looks like he's thirty. He's like he's in his thirties, man. And the same could be said for Junji Ito, who is also fifty six years old. Which is kind of those crazy. old. These are masters of their craft, dude. These are legit masters, dude. And they're gonna, whatever game comes out, if it's anything like PT, uh, <laughs> I know. on PS five. I I I, uh, I I I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna freak people out. It's not gonna make any sense. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I just need this in my life. Because there's horror in Death Stranding. Death Stranding is a horrible idea if you really think about it. It's oh terrifying. god, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's like utterly bleak and horribly despondent. Yeah, and, like invis- Die Hard Man. Oof. Yeah, invisible terrors that keep you in the house. Oh wait. <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh wait. <laughs> wait. Darling. <laughs> Wait. That's our news, man. That's our news. We did it. We conquered the Microsoft announcements. We braved the G four Genesis the G four revival, Doug. We wel- we welcome our ant overlords. What are you looking forward to? Uh I'm looking forward to finishing up my masters in class for the summer this next week. Uh due on August second. Uh August. Christ. Christ, Christ, Christ. Don't think about it. Christ. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. I gotta make it I gotta finish up the podcast, which is bizarre to me to make, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um I am looking forward to you showering me in Gundams. Please pay daddy. Daddy, please. I will and... give it to daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Come to daddy. <laughs> anyway, yeah. and you and you created that. That's not me, I, that's all you. I need to finish uh I'm luckily not going to. I need to keep playing and maybe attempt to finish Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, that's that could wait. That's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a while. It's gonna take a goddamn while. It's gonna take a it's gonna take a goddamn while. God. Yeah, but I need to like prioritize homework over that first. Yeah, man, you gotta prioritize life, dog. Exactly, and yeah. including my wife. Yeah, your lovely video game Paper Mario playing life, dude. God, I. We are both like so laggard today because we made fried chicken sandwiches from scratch yesterday. Yeah, yeah. that's that itis that that's that goes to bed with yeah, you. Yeah, it's the itis. It's the it's the itis right now because yeah, handmade buns, handmade fried chicken, handmade coleslaw, some spicy mayo all over in that bitch. Oh uh, well, my god! My question is: is where's my mailed in plate? Where's my plate at, bro? <laughs> I need y'all to mail me a plate. You got to travel all the way to Arkansas first. That's fine. Flights are real cheap nowadays. <laughs> Come to the meth capital of the states. I'll I'll get me my uh, complimentary meth <laughs> that they give you, that they give you as you leave the airport. <laughs> Come to the airport and they just look it down and go, "You ain't from around here, are you?" Here's your complimentary pot. Here's your complimentary meth. I hope you like your time here in Arkansas. Welcome to Walmart. How can I help you? We got guns and soda. Do you guys have Fago? Tell me you have Fago. What the hell is Fago? Fago. It's like it's like it's type in Fago, F A Y G O. What the hell is Fago? Fago. Uh, Tell me you have Fago. I, I I've never heard of it till today, uh, so probably not. I want Fago, but it's super expensive to ship it to California, because that's what the insane clown posse drinks, and that's what I need to drink. Oh Jesus Christ! No, that's automatically a miss for me. I need to put like I need to mix four local and Fago and become the next stage of human evolution. <laughs> You know what, my dude? You can go ahead for it. I'm just going to, like, I'm just not going to do that. Because I believe that I could become a Resident Evil level goblin goo- goose juice monster based upon things that I can find around my home. All right, Mike, you got you to gotta dial back and get some food in you because you're going crazy at this I point. I haven't eaten yet this morning. Exactly. You need some sugar in you. <laughs> okay, please. Fair. For your own health. Go do uh, it. Okay. If you want to support my 
my G virus <laughs> do it yourself campaign, please do so via Patreon. <laughs> Patreon forward slash MOTN. Well, where, when submitted, I will use that money to make my own G virus, and you'll see me terrorizing downtown Los Angeles <laughs> with a giant, explodable eyeball on my shoulder. Um, but if you wanted to support the channel non monetarily, you can always do so by liking our content, by subscribing to our channel, and by commenting on our posts. Because what? Feedback is important. Did we make your giggle? Did we make you mad? Let us know, man. We need to know. So we can fine-tune this well-oiled machine. <coughs> <coughs> machine. There we go. I'm already starting to transform. Um, Shit. It's begun. It begins. Um, also, you can definitely join us on Twitter, which is at MNerdiverse, where we do all types of fun stuff. I do polls. I do art sometimes. I'm currently doing another six fan arts. Um, where, you, where I let the audience, the Nerdiverse, choose six characters that I have to draw at gunpoint. So I'm working on that now. <laughs> I'm trying to get those done. So if you want to submit any characters, hit us up on Twitter. I'll be more than happy to look at your choice and do the uh, Seymour Skinner meme where I look down upon it and go, pathetic. <laughs> P- pathetic. And then be forced to draw it. And you can find me on Twitter at Austin Ozzy or Zed Ozzy Austin. Who knows anymore? Where I rant randomly, I retweet stupid shit, and I curse out our corporate overlords for being bad. Like Ubisoft. Bad Ubisoft. Don't sexually abuse your coworkers. Bad Pepsi. Stop putting uh, the, the, the 666 mark of the beast chips in our juices. Bad Nestle. Stop using child slave labor on the coast of Africa. Bad Red Lobster, stop making Cheddar Bay Biscuits so delicious. Why you gotta do this to me, man? I'm talking real stuff. You talking about stuff that just sounds good. I'm just saying. <laughs> Cheddar Bay Biscuits my, are God. My life would be, I would be way healthier if they didn't exist. Or Popeye's Biscuits, goddamn. Oh, uh, no. Do you, you guys have churches out there? We do, but they were so bad they left. That's rough, because churches Biscuits are godlike, dude. Well, they... The workers were just so bad they had to get li- they had to get gone. Oh, you know, can't you can't <laughs> you know you can't drive a Mercedes with a Honda engine, dog. Like, you know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jesus. All right, so this has been another exciting episode of Masters of the Nerdiverse. Yes, where we, we will all- always. Hmm? 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 hmm. We. You say will. Will. Always. Show uh, ask you, you to <laughs> take take that next step beyond. beyond. Damn it, Mike. That was perfect. <laughs>